Hi guys! <laughs> Hi guys, it's Amanda here, um, Reality Arts. So welcome to Arts and Wellness Wednesdays. So um, I thought I would, I've made some notes um, because there's some, there's definitely some points that I want to um, touch on and talk about. Did I bring my water? Did I bring my water? Um, and I wanted to just to, yeah, just to make sure that I touch on a few points because there's things that I wanted to talk about today that I feel are really important and we need to, um, we need to address them. So we don't, I mean, is that my water there? Anyway, <laughs> so um, welcome to today and I wanted to find out how you're doing and, um, and what you're doing at, at the moment. And so I think, so think about, okay, yeah, what you're physically doing and then just think about how you're doing in this particular moment. And, um, you know, I just wanted to also, you know, say for those who are, who have contracted the virus and who know people who have died, you know, my heart and thoughts go out to you. I just prick myself with the... Um, pin. Anyway, so yeah, my heart's a, heart and thoughts go out to you and just to really, you know, um, send you all the love and virtual hugs um, possible. And um, also to think about how you're feeling. Um, so at the moment, my mum is in a home and we're not getting very much information. All we're getting is, oh, you know, um, there's no change, everything's fine. And I think uh, some people can forget or not even understand the emotional impact or the the psychological impact of not seeing anybody and not seeing the people who were closest to you or who used to see you and used to hear their voice on a regular basis. And um, that is my, for me, that's really important. And I've been really, um, I think towards last week, I was really, uh, well, not maybe the week before, but I was really, as, as everything started to kind of unfold and curfews came into play and then we, we are now on, um, it started off as a 24 hour lockdown until the 14th but we are now, there's some shops open um, with restrictions. But um, it was just like, I was thinking to myself, you know, it's, it's like, I know what's going on because I've been watching the news and that was another thing that I think really played on me because I couldn't get to mum, couldn't get to see her, can't get to speak to her. All they're just saying is, you know, if things, you know, if things had changed, we would ring you. And it's just like, no, it's not that if things change, it's how do we maintain people who live in a home, um, who are normally receiving visitors every day, every other day, how can we maintain the health and well-being in this time? And so I was thinking even, uh, you know, whether my sister passes, I oh know, has a phone, passes a phone and then speaks to mum and just, you know, the things that mum would normally hear. Because again, I was wondering, you know, are they even, mum didn't have a TV in her room um, because she's got visual um, problems and she can only see really like close. And it was just like, if they've not turned on the radio, then it's like silence 24 hours a day apart from those people who come in, breakfast, lunch and dinner, and who may sit with her, whether they engage and speak is another matter. While she's being fed, are they feeding her with patience? Or, you know, so all those things started weighing on my mind. And this is something, again, that we have to, you know, it's not, it's not enough just to say, oh yeah, everything's fine, you know. And we know that staff are under stress and, um, I feel that what is not recognised is that the visits from relatives actually does ease the work that they then have to do. Because on top of what they would normally have to do when they're stretched, 
are they now engaging? You know, and, and that's the thing that when we look at um, the care home environment, stimulation is the thing that p keeps people's um, health and well-being stable and um, things that they can do, stimulus, so not just the TV, that's not enough and you see some who were, most of them are, you know, they all have their own rooms and the social impact, the social aspect is not something that is well developed again they'll say staff and all of this but obviously yes i recognize that we are in uncharted territories and this is a different situation this is a, a situation that we'd never have imagined so there is understanding there but you know we have to think about how our loved ones in care homes are their health and well-being is maintained especially in this time and what things can we put in place um, and yeah, what things can we put in place um, and the, the ultimate aim is to make sure that they don't get infected because they're vulnerable because you know of some of their conditions but this whole thing um, I was telling a friend it's, it's like a big you know it's a, a worldwide shared disaster movie that's how it, it felt and it was just like we've seen so many over the years of things happening and I was just like, I just couldn't, in my head it was just like, I really, I just, I don't think I could take it. Because it was never anything you imagined that you would be in. And then all the things that, you know, from the films that you picked up and you thought, well, I'd never do that and I'll never do that. And I'd be the one to run or I would be the one, you know, who made sure that they had you know all the skills and stuff like that and I just felt it was just like oh my gosh you know a curfew oh my gosh I've never lived through that oh my gosh you know you can't go to the shops you have to stay in and we are blessed in that we've got you know enough garden to to wander around and I go out and I'm doing my garden and as far as they're concerned as long as you stay in your area then you know, you, you <laughs> but it was just like, who would I be in this disaster movie? You know, who would I be the one who got eaten first or who, you know, um, didn't have enough supplies or, you know, wasn't able to start, you know, build a fire or find shelter or whatever it is or, and, and so it was like the survival mode kicked in and part of me became, and I was trying to understand what it was, I became really sad. And I was sad because, um, you know, as I thought of my mum and being so far away, not being able to do anything or not being able to see or talk to her because I like, talked to her at least, you know, twice a week. Um, and it was just like, you know, even with technology, I cannot speak to her. And so I felt sad about that and then sad about the life we thought we had. So on one hand, we've left behind the, oh yeah, I'm just gonna run to the shops and all of this kind of stuff. And now you have to think, who is that approaching my, you know, walking down my drive? Who is it? I don't recognize them. They shouldn't be on my drive. We're all supposed to be self-isolating. What are they doing here? And that happened like a couple of days ago. Some guy wandered down. He said he didn't have any money. And it was just like, my first thoughts was just like, Oh my gosh, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, what are you, why are you, why are you so close? Why are you standing next to my gate? Um, and then he said, you know, he didn't have any money to get home. So we sort of like gave him some money to get home. And it was just like, there were so many people in, in the situation, like you think about your, until you hear about those things, you, you're just thinking to yourself, okay, you know, we've got to get ourselves together. We've got to make sure we've got candles and, you know, if the water goes out, that there's enough water um, to drink. But there are people in worse off situations who don't have food, who couldn't go out and buy some food when we were told, like, you know, tomorrow at five, everywhere shutting. So those people weren't able to, sorry, I've got something in my eye, weren't able to, you know, didn't have the money to, to do that and weren't, you know, if they were reliant on the job that they had, what 
support were they getting? And you know, it's it's it is fine that, and it's good that we're told that things are. I'm getting hot now. Like, Why have you got a cardigan on? Um, but these things don't. Um, they don't roll out quick enough, and there will always be people who you think, well, have they, um, have has their situation got worse because of the drastic measures that we've had to take, and is there a group? Because everybody's then focused on their families and you know trying to make. But is there who is looking out for the elderly who live on their own, or the ones who are wandering, the vagrants that we have? they call vagrants but um, the homeless who um, there's a, like a vagrant society here but who is looking out for the homeless who is looking like there, there's a one lady I see she's an elderly lady at least in her 70s 80s and she wanders around and you just think her family where's her family are her family even in this country um, does she have a home uh, do I just see a snapshot of, of her situation? So, um, you know, seeing it out of context. But it is about how we uh, are treating the, um, treating those who are not able to help themselves in this situation. And yeah, so this, this movie I did, it was just like, yeah, some big giant, you know, Steven Spielberg disaster movie where the whole world is, is affected and the whole world is affected. People are dying. You know, how many of the seven and a half billion people, um, what is the percentage of people who have lost their lives? And um, I was just like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a statistic, statistic. I don't want to be that person in the movie who runs the typical... It's a typical woman um, who they've painted, um, the, the, who's running to get away. She trips and then she sprains her ankle. And you just think, oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? Why did you trip? You know, get up. Um, or the one that we shout out in the movies and we say, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Don't go down there. Can't you see what's going on? What's wrong with you? And <laughs> so... Um, I didn't want to be that person, so as I say, I wanted to be the one who is, you know, it's just like, I got my beans, I know where to plant, I, can, I know where's north, south, east or west, I know how to start a, a mini fire to cook food, I know how to, um, you know, track berries, not track berries, but, you know, forage and um, build a nice shelter, um, create a fire pit, yeah, as I say, you know, um, so be able to um, light a fire without with just using sticks, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So um, I was I was feeling yeah. It was just like, and I had to really talk to myself, and and I think that that's something that we have to remember that we have to stay in contact with, you know, friends and family. And this is a time now we're all off. So it's like, apart from, you know, the front, the, the uh, frontline services and the essential services, but generally speaking, most people are off. So it's time to reconnect with those people. And I mentioned that um, last week I gave a list of tips and I will be kind of separating the tips for you to kind of just, okay, here's a minute of a tip. And you can, you know, it's like reconnecting, um, learning a skill, reconnecting with, an own with another skill. If you've got people in your house, kind of, you know, finding an activity that you can do together on a regular basis. So, um, like for us, um, you know, our son was at uh, uni, so we would either, we'd take turns and we'd drop him to uni, but then we would have like a, it was like a, you know, you'd be having conversations or in the evening when we came in, you know, whoever picked him up or dropped him, whatever. So you'd have that like half hour of conversation that when we, so when we come home, you don't necessarily notice that we've all gone into our, you know, I'm either in my studio or on my computer, my husband's on his computer doing his work and then Sakani will be doing his work and his music. So it was just like those times where we were brought together because of this, the 
things that we needed to do, we have to then make sure that we set up something. And again, it could be things like that you hadn't, like it's usually when people come that we get out of the board games. So why not get out of the board games and just start some routines that you and the family can do. And um, to, to again, to have a routine, don't just go throughout the day just wondering and thinking, oh, what will I do now? Set yourself up a routine that you can follow and that differentiates the days, or especially the weekends, like to differentiate the weekend. For me this time, what I did was I did the minimal amount of work because I'm usually still, you know, sharing, doing stuff, editing on the computers. So I went and had a nap, you know, it's just like, oh, it's Sunday, you know, I can take things a bit more easier. And then Monday, back into my work routine and my schedule, which I have something different that I have to either post or share or create or like today, you know, the Arts and Wellness Wednesdays, every Wednesday. And I try and do these sessions as, this is as live as I'm gonna get at the moment um, because it's like, we're doing it like there's no editing, we'll just, or minimal editing, um, and we'll just get it out there. So I want you to check those out and I want you to um, think about how you can develop yourself in this time and, you know, set some routines and think about going forward. You know, if you have a job where you, you work from home anyway, you know, think about what it's going to be like when things go back to a new normal, things go, um, you know, or if you didn't work from home, but you have been able to work from home, how are things for your business, your company, or the people who you work for, how are things going to be um, changed because now more and more people are able to work from home? It's going to have an impact on the way businesses go forward. So, you know, there are those are things that I wanted to touch on. And um, make sure that you get out. You know, if you have a small space um, and there's a lot of you in there, make sure, you know, if you can't, if you don't have any outdoor space, a garden space, or, um, you know, open the window, you have to get some fresh air you have to move about, you have to get exercise and um, if possible you have to grow something. So that's something that I've got, you know, I do a gardening channel and I do weekly posts on growing stuff in my garden and it's, it's, I love it, I just love it. So um, if there are some of you who, you know, uh, new to gardening or you know we're looking at tips and hints I've got loads on my gardening channel and you'll be able to see the link um, and you know some of you some of you some of you may still be able to go to the supermarket so you can pick up some seeds you know like in I know Sainsbury's if you're in England Sainsbury's and Tesco's um, if you're still able to go to those places, or even if you've still got um, hardware stores open, they sell seeds. Buy some packets of seeds, you know, buy some, you know, some um, greens and things that you can get quite a, 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 an early harvest. Like I got um, kale growing in, in four days, the seedlings started to come up. So there are some that you can, you know, get the shoots from, the greens from, and then whatever space you have, start to plant those out. And again, you'll be surprised, you know, it's like starting a new skill that you may not have thought about before. But going forward, you might then get into allotment gardening or growing more substantial stuff. And, you know, some of the plants have, um, they don't need much, you know, or a very small space to then yield um, a quite a substantial food harvest. So I would suggest you um, do that and um, learn a survival skill. Um, that's something that I think you should also do. Um, so 
one of the things one of the things that I've been doing um, is uh, I went online and this was in the time that we were they were talking about you know there's not enough masks and this and that and you know there's not enough masks for staff so don't be going out and buying all these you know these the th no, N those masks um, is it N92? I don't know I can't remember anyway because there's not enough for staff and they're the ones who are going to be saving lives so or you know working the care homes that are looking after our loved ones and so they're they're the priority they need the masks and for yourself one thing you should be staying at home if that's been your directive and even if shops are open don't be going every day to the shop it's ridiculous you <laughs> You don't need to be going every day. Once a week, if you need to, and if you've got the storage space, get enough for two weeks. So you limit the amount of exposure you have to other people. So it's just that. So anyway, I've been making some masks. And so I've made, um, so this is, this is one of the versions that I've made. And I made different versions because I found that when I made I made one and there was more gap here, I made another one there was a gap here. So I've used some of the different measurements, so I'm trying to find the one that works for me and and then see how many I can make and you know if anybody else wants they can. So I've been making, um, one of the things I've been doing in my studio is you know doing some masks and I'll do a video of what I've, the, the one that I finally settled with and the others that I made and the differences that I found with them. Um, and uh, I think it's, you know, if you can, uh, a lot of people, you know, especially in Barbados and around the world, a lot of people have sewing machines. And so, so I'm stitching. <laughs> the other thing I'm doing is stitching Cole's bed. Um, he, he, he had a cloth bed before, and um, so just getting hot around the neck. Take off your cardigan then. It's just it just feels comfy. It's just like my comfy cardi. Um, it's a long one. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, I've been stitching a bed. So this is just the cover. And it's like a pillowcase, the way I've done it, it's like a pillowcase. So it can easily be um, removed and washed. And then the bed, which is padded, I'm really quite pleased. So I'm doing a, a, just a mini video on that. Um, so I'll share it. But the other thing I wanted to um, let you know and remind you of is my um, creative encourager I was going to say app, it's not even an app. So basically what it is, is two free sessions. So you, um, we connect online or on the phone um, and it's a way for you to talk through some of the creative things that you're doing or want to do. And I think it's, it's, even in this time, it's really key because there's so many of us who may be isolated or as creatives, you know, by the nature of what we do, we're isolated. So if you need to um, book a session, I'll leave the link where you can do that. You can either book one hour session or two half hour sessions. And we can talk about what you're doing creatively, what you wanna do, working, moving forward, and even how you're using your time that you have now in this particular worldwide event that's going on and you know use your creativity to um, help you get through your days and set structures and routines so creative encourager um, I want you to um, you know make use of it and and connect and we'll see how we go forward okay so there's that i'm also doing more and more art videos so if you're looking for activities to do there'll be things um art activities art videos that you can connect with so that's another lovely <laughs> that's another lovely thing and i'll also be linking to 
there's so many things that I've made over time so if you're looking for something to make then I'll signpost you to things like art journals um, I do crochet projects I do um, I've got material Mondays that was a series I did where every Monday I make something from fabric I've got fabric journals uh, crochet necklaces um, recycle projects there's so many that I will you know begin to share and let you um, if you want you can check them out they're on a lot of them are on my blog but I will be creating some videos as well for them as for those at the time um, when I started doing a lot of those projects that were going back a few years I wasn't doing videos and so I only have images um, to that I was showing at the time but it's nice to actually see in a video the actual finished project project product um, or thing that I've made and actually see how it works and how it's worked over time um, and what I'll do is have you know some templates that you can um, download and if you want to make it you'll be able to make it um, gardening videos I'm thinking of ramping up my gardening videos at the moment I do two gardening videos so um, there's just so much I want to share and again you know just resharing some of the videos that I've done that you may find interesting some little hints and tips and just again you know the way I started how I started um, I start yeah how I started and how I started here where we are now it was just there was nothing here and over time things have grown and you know it has it's just been a pleasure you know it's been a pleasure that's outweighed the times where you're dealing with bugs and pests and mold and you know overwhelm and all of that so I cover all of that on my um, site I am I, prob I probably post daily across each of the platforms so if you want to just images you can come to Instagram Pinterest Twitter um, my blog my website and I will be and I've got patreon as well I've got some behind the scenes videos so I've got more to add there um, I've got patreon for both my gardening videos and um, my art for the gardening there's more that you can get involved with in terms of the garden so if you don't have the space yourself you can sponsor a bed that will then um, be able to impact the whole community and for those who are more vulnerable or who have less and it's even more so in a time like this if I can grow a lot more fruits and vegetables that and, and you can be a part of that journey then you'll be able to see how many people you can impact through these I'm trying to do these um, kind of gift like gift but really low cost food fruit fruit and vegetable boxes or bags or you know maybe a box or but anyway um, so that those who can't afford it can actually have access to these things um, and yeah so you know we'll be yeah donating I think the only cost will be the bags and if I can make them or recycle them or recycle boxes then you know the the cost is minimal it's just about the seeds and things like that anyway so that's some of the other things that I'm doing that you can get involved in and check out and just generally hints and tips which I place on the blog and um, I wanted to I think this is the last point that I wanted to leave you with and it's for those who are carers so I used to be a full-time carer to my mother who is living with dementia and it's very it can be very difficult at the best of times for those who are caring for a loved one even more so in this crisis that we have or this situation and um, what the one the one thing this week I would say is that you need to develop a routine there needs to be some sort of regularity to the day especially for the person who is caring and this also helps you so if there is set things that you do you can call on other people to fill in and they know exactly what they need to do right I need to just 
I know if it's just wash up the dishes and make a cup of tea um, for the person who's living with dementia or you know prepare lunch or you know help with doing something but that you schedule out your day and it doesn't have to be rigid it can be flexible because sometimes you don't fancy doing something and more so the person who is living with dementia or that you're caring for they might not feel like you know doing that particular thing or playing a game or watching this or what, or what. but it has to be you have to develop a, a routine for them because boredom will set in and um, it can get more difficult so you know I, I suggest you know like a morning routine where it could be that you go out for a walk or if you're not able to go out for a walk you do something connected with nature um, that starts the day and then you move on to you know maybe a bit of quiet time or it could be that you know um, you do some writing or you do some art so think about activities that you can actually do it could be that we prepare lunch so whilst they may not be able to prepare lunch by themselves it could be that they you know chop up some vegetables or do a part of that activity that then goes towards the whole and then you've got the afternoon um, it could be you know you read to them or they read or um, you know you have a discussion or you look through photographs so think about things that you can do that on on particular days if so if you're one of the things that you do is look at or you know photographs and talk about the images if somebody had come to visit and again it, if there's other members of the family that are there they can do that same thing as well they can look at these photographs the long-term memory in people who are living with dementia is the one that usually stays intact for the longest so they could be looking at photographs of childhood of of you know you when you was a baby and remember that particular day what you was doing how you was behaving or whatever it is so think of some activities that you can do that will structure your day you know especially if you used to go out to work and now you have to stay in and then now you're on lockdown as well so having those routines helps you make the most of your time and um, helps them feel more independent because whilst they have dementia there's many who say oh you know they can't learn anything but they can you know my mum learnt new songs it was just like take she used to come home from the um, daycare centre singing take that song so I was thinking initially I didn't recognise it and then when I realised it was a take that song it was just like how on earth because I don't play take that at home but the radio station that she was listening to on a daily basis because she used to go five days a week at a particular time they would pet play this take that song and so she learned it and so the routine and regularity is something that you know will help enable somebody to feel more independent because then they know what to expect they know that you know yeah in the morning I go out for a walk and they can talk about it and especially if you know think about things that they used to do anyway so maybe as you were growing up or that the family say that these are things they used to do they used to go out to work they used so they that idea of getting up and getting yourself ready is something that is something that you should keep so rather than say oh no you know why don't you lay down you're not going to work you don't have to go to work anymore um you say okay come on then yeah let's you know you go out to walk go out, you're going out to work take them for a walk they walk they come back and you've got a next activity or you know okay we're going to rest and have a cup of tea or you know whatever so it's about keeping them feeling independent and keeping you feeling independent and um, it helps both of your health and well-being and state of mind so wrapping up health Arts and Wellness Wednesdays, that's it for this week. Um, <laughs> do check back to see how the bed, the dog bed, came on. I will be uh, leaving some pictures on my blog. But, you know, just remember to um, make the most of the time that you have, you know, and that includes 
connecting with loved ones and speaking to people and making sure people are all right and if you've got neighbours that you haven't spoken to for a while ring them or you know call out to them from across the way we don't have anybody um, on one side of us but we've got uh, a neighbour that I you know we connect via whatsapp we ring or over the <laughs> garden wall um, but yeah, stay in contact, stay healthy, stay in if you don't need to go out in the sense of, you know, keeping your, um, again, you know, it's just social distancing. It's like, what is it? How, how are we going to be after it? You know, if we're keeping six foot away from people, how will that, how, and you can't see their face, so you can't see the expressions, the smile or whatever, how does that then impact on the way that we view each other? So we've got to be mindful of that and you have to then, you know, whilst you whilst you have to keep your distance from people, um, use the technology to stay close. Okay, so take care and thanks as well to my podcast listeners. Um, go onto the blog and I will be sharing any images that I showed and links that I shared on the video. Take care for now. See you soon.